What's up, Trevor? Good to see you, my friend. Long time no talk. Yeah, good to see you too. You've been busy, been, huh? It's been a while. I've been busy. You've been really busy. Yeah. How was your Father's Day? Relaxing. Good. <laughs> How about yourself? You, I'll see you out on the boat. Yeah, we took the boat out, had a barbecue. Nice. It was awesome. We had a good one. It was fun. Excellent. That's cool. Yeah. So you were saying you watched which video, me and the boys, the album breakdown? Yeah, doing the album breakdown, yeah. <clears throat> kind of funny, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> uh, the audio was mixed a little too high, but, you know, I tried I tried yeah. stuff. So. It is what it is. Yeah, man, did you check out Nick's uh, art direction video, his art video? Really good. Really impressed with that. I thought it was cool. I went back in YouTube and plugged you for mastering the audio in there as well. So oh, I don't know if you saw that. Because you weren't in the credits at the end, but I put you in the no. YouTube credits. But just wanted to make sure you got props on that. It's oh, cool. cool. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. So what have you been up to, man? Uh, a bit of remixing that somebody sent to me, strangely Nice. Enough. You getting your fingers yeah. in that? I'm trying. <laughs> Fun stuff, huh? Yeah, it's good. Did you yeah. listen to mine? My version? Yes, I did, yeah. I yeah. just wanted to see if I could give you some uh, inspiration, you know? Yeah, I'm hoping to have something I can go over to you towards the end of the week. Cool, man. I mean, I think it's awesome. I, I'm loving it, dude. I'm, I I started on uh, the Narcissist remix, just yep. barely, but yeah, that'll be fun, too. But then I want to see what you do and, like, take yours and run with them too you know what i mean like and we'll just take the best ones we'll just mess with them all and see what happens you know what i mean because what's cool about a remix is sky's the limit you know yeah you can do anything you want it's a bit different <laughs> yeah it's cool well that's the stuff that you know we listen to you know those remember those yeah. albums i sent you the filter yes. remixes perfect circle nine inch nails i mean it's in it's in that vein yeah, some good stuff. I'll put a uh, specific playlist together for that lot. <clears throat> cool, man. So, uh, which camera are you on right now? I am on a Amazon Special, a little HD. Are you able to do a show me your gear again, or yeah, yeah, you have I to can, switch cameras? Yeah, can, Let's try. Let's do a quick studio know. tour, and then we'll get into it. Right, studio tour. So, most importantly, foremost is monitoring. Mm -hmm. I use predominantly the Focals, MG Clear oh. Pros. Oh wow! And then I'll just more that a second. But then on the desktop, I've got the Mum Sixes. Ah, yeah, those are beautiful. So they are spectacular. Um, yeah. Your mixes and your masters are translating really well on those. If you ever want to hear a set of really good monitors i say these are only the babies the little sixes they've got the uh, the eights and yeah they're now developing the tens and um, they are stunning absolutely spectacular and they are quite revealing because you were able to pick out some stuff for me that i can't hear on my monitors i uh, one day i'll get some new monitors now you got a sub too right yeah i've got a sub so under my desk is kok 10. yeah so i only use that if i want to check low end um, right. The mums go down to four. They will start rolling off. Oh, we froze a little, but you'll come back. Um, got a heck of a lot of stuff on it. So I normally just uh, click there the old boss pedal on, and I seem ready to go. Does that? Do you like it to hit your pat leg a little bit? Is that kind of how you like to feel it as well? If I'm in a just a purely listening mood then I will crank it and basically shake the house to bits. Um, if I'm checking while I'm mixing or mastering, then it, it just barely tickles, but you can hear the subs. Yeah, that's kind of how I do it too. Now, real quick, show me your uh, outboard gear one more time, all right, for everybody at home, for all 25 of my followers. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So what um, kinds of things would you use that on? Tell me a little bit about it. That I'll do on the mix bus for drums. 
I use it on. Um, the main mix bus as well, depending on what mix I'm doing. Um, it's brilliant because it's got the dynamic EQ on it as well as the compression side of it. And then there's obviously all the various um, colour buttons as well. You know, oh, cool. PhD and all that sort of stuff, but you just blend it into suit and okay. then I'll have it on a, as an insert. So I can just either use it on a parallel chain or directly on the channel. If... There you go, yeah. That'd be, so you can blend it in on a parallel, huh? <clears throat> And below that, I've got my interface, which is the uh, Claret 8 Pro. Yeah. You got eight channels, huh? Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, so I, can, I can add another right onto that as well. And then you got your SSL control surfaces too, right? Yeah, so if I then move the desk around. That is a marvel of beauty there. I just love it. This is a game changer for me in the wild. Yeah. So it's just awesome. so quick now. We drop down onto the trackball and away we go. Yeah, me too. I like the trackball. Yeah. It's so cool, man. And then when I'm doing any work like yours, remixing the stuff, obviously you've got uh, milk from cool. overseas. I want any bases. I've got me complete, a little complete keyboard for using all my native instruments since yeah i have uh, one of those as well a version of that and i've got a machiner for doing my drum sequencing cool man you should throw a little of that in there on the remixes you know mix some break beats and stuff with it i'm, I'm working on that for you <laughs> i'd love to hear some of that dude then if we want to get really tasty i've got my dj stuff oh cool so I'm an old school DJ, I've got my vinyl next door, it's not in this room. And then I'm just learning now the bass, so I've got a little orange Glenn Hughes limited edition 50 watt amp. Yeah, those are now. sweet amps, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's got a lovely tone to it. That's a great and amp. A How's your bass playing going? Tell me stuff. Uh, it's not brilliant. <laughs> but I'm only into it a few weeks, so... Yeah, I'm just we'll keep uh, it up, man. That'll oh yeah, yeah I'm, I'm keeping it you'll, up. You'll uh, you'll catch on quick with your ear and your, you know, your yeah, your so music I've stuff. Got myself a little Ibanez Geo to learn on, which is brilliant. Lovely little guitar. Yeah, that's cool. And then one thing that's obviously not in this studio because it's only a small studio is I've got me uh, a Pearl Export drum kit down the bottom of the garden. Oh no way. Good call. Cool. So, What's that uh, guitar behind you? Is that a uh, that, Strat? That is an old Encore. It's a oh. Strat copper, yeah. Cool. Very old thing that I'm just uh, playing around with. I've got a chance to pick up on it because they're noisy. Yeah. And uh, I've just, re just restrung it for some bizarre reason. But, yeah, it's another thing I've got to learn. Absolutely, man. I, dude, I've only been playing guitar for like five years now, man, and it's been... It's been awesome, man. It's just a game changer. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. There you go. I can hear you a little better. Thank you. Okay. So, there we go. Move that up. <clears throat> Is that? Yeah, man. Once you learn a few chords, you can tinker. It's awesome, man. Yeah. You know, you've heard me say no, it before, you... but I got a decent right hand for chugging and junk junk because of my drum rhythm in my brain, you know? Yeah. But I've been hanging out with guitar players my whole life so i kind of learned by osmosis as well yep cool brother yeah, that's cool and obviously everything i've got goes into cubase cubase my, is your dog that, that's the door of choice for myself i use alongside that also ableton live okay and i've also got a got reaper as well which i use every now and again uh, that's more to do with it uh, next door um, they're in a rock band if they want to do any tracks that they all use Reaper so I've just got that just for convenience that's cool 
Now, are you going to try Luna? You know, it's for, I downloaded it. I haven't installed it yet. Like I've been saying, I don't want to switch over yet because I'm neck deep in projects, but I'm going to try it eventually. Yeah. To be honest, though, the one I prefer is just uh, Cubase. It just does everything for me. Mm -hmm. Are and you curious about it. Luna, though, at all? Are you going to try it? I haven't been. Um, I might get around to it. The, the, the latest one that I did was... Um, Oh, what's an eye? Um, Reaper. Um, but that was the latest one, but I don't use it that much. Okay. Is it pretty intuitive? Did you pick it up pretty quick? Reasonably quick, yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that it doesn't do that Cubase does, which just makes it so much easier in Cubase for when I'm doing various projects. Yeah. Certainly mastering and, and um, the remixes. Now, uh, yeah. you're like me. Don't you put a SSL channel strip on every track? That's what, yes. I, that's yep. what I do. I yeah. tickle it with uh, one and a half dB gain reduction. I use the EQ. I use the high pass and the low pass. I, I get it kind of shaped with the channel strips. Yeah. And then I get surgical with other stuff. But I just love this. the sum of all those parts. To me, it sounds like an SSL yeah. console to me just, you know what i mean it's got punch, just it's it got the same. saturation and color everything just i love that yeah uh, i'll do it also because it helps me use their ecosystem so i've got the the uc one which is a for sure replica of it so i don't even have to look at the screen i'm just go straight into the uh, uc one and just tweak away to your heart's content um like i say it sounds good it is good yeah no matter I, what no matter what the sound the settings are if, it, if i'm smashing it 18 db who cares if it sounds good totally man they're forgiving aren't they i mean they get yeah. i think the cues on them the more you push them the 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 tighter they get like kind of like that you know so they're pretty forgiving yeah. you're not pulling up a bunch of mud you know when you're boosting 50 Absolutely. hertz on a kick or 150 yeah. on a guitar they don't pull up much mud you know yeah. I've been cutting into, I've been boosting into a cut at around two, right around 200 to 230. I'm boosting 150 into that cut. That's how I'm getting the low end of my guitars a little bit more bloomy. Yeah, you know? to get that chug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been working. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it works well. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've noticed the change over the last few months of working with you. Absolutely, yeah. Nick it's said good, the it's same got, thing. Yeah, the last, yeah, since end of January to now, the the clarity of the sound has changed a, ma a massive amount. It's really yeah, good. I'm getting really there good. quicker too, aren't I? I'm, I'm yeah. getting there a little quicker. And then, um, I mean, getting all those reps with you on, you know, the Freak Breed project was that was yep. huge, man. You got a lot of experience on that too. Oh yeah, definitely with that show with that. Um it helped me me massively as well. Heck yeah, and that's the Just, point. Yeah, the continual communication that we were having on so I know we're what we seven, eight hours time difference. Yeah. But the yeah, communication I got part, uh eleven thirty, what do you got? I've got eight uh, sorry, six thirty at the moment. Okay. So it's still kinda early, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, it was working out well because when I was getting up in the morning um you were just finishing off the day mm -hmm. so we could do a quick message then i can get on with doing a bit of mixing before i start my day job and then likewise of an evening you finish off your day i'm just about to go back another few messages another little bit of tweaking and that way we go again exactly because i was getting off work going home mixing for two and a half hours communicating and then you were getting them after work and so it kind of worked yeah. out didn't it it was like it did yeah it was really it was cool working out yeah, and, it's good. You know. Really so good. speaking of that, let's jump into it. I have your notes. Um, beautiful job yeah. on these, by the way. And you know, I did a breakdown with the boys, but it was no, it was by no means uh, technical. It was pretty much we were just having fun and talking about the songs, some of the songwriting. I want to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty of your process, maybe mine as well, a little. But you know, we have the opening track. Uh, which was firing squad and yeah. for me it was pretty straightforward you know I had to track 
the vocals, obviously, and I had to. And then, w upon your recommendation, I tracked some more bass uh, yep. with Scotty on the heavy parts, which I thought turned out really cool. Yeah, what do you remember about it. that? Um, no, so I'm having to read more notes as well because I've uh, listened to so much stuff before it. Um, yeah, no kidding. You used ozone yes. ten. Oh, so. Did you do any widening? Uh, this is remember. Did you see the post I left in the Produce Like a Pro Academy about uh, master bus chain and imaging? Did you get to that? It got a lot of responses and a lot of comments, okay. which I thought was cool because. I really wanted to know what people are using in their master bus chain because I'm experimenting a little with EQ and imaging. Yep. And I know that it's important when you do image to only do a tiny bit because you'll yes. have phase yeah. issues. But whenever I did um, the widening on any of your tracks, um, I've also got the plugins that allow me to check my phase as I'm doing it. And then it was all automated as well. It wasn't just, oh, I want to stick it up 15 percent and that's it it's everything's automated through so a lot of the eqs that i did were automated um just for the various sections of the songs as your songs progressed yeah because they your songs all evolve as they go there's they're not as clear cut as well that's a verse that's a chorus that's a verse that's a chorus that's a uh outro etc they all evolve <clears throat> and organic they move around such a lot Right. Some avant-garde type arrangements, a lot of space, intro, outro, bridges, for sure. Now tell yeah, me the yeah. plug-in you're using for the for the phase alignment. Oh, that's, that is on uh, Cubase. Okay. That's on, on their metering. So I'm checking it as I'm going. Okay. So I know I'm not, I'm not pushing over the limits. That's all part of their metering. It's, it's all part of their control panel. Um, let me just see if I'm Did you see in the Cola uh, audio cult that he's given away that guitar phase alignment tool for free? No, I didn't say that. Yeah, uh, um, when you have time later, jump in and read about it. I'm going to get it, man, because yeah. where I'm working with multiple amps and multiple mics, I think it would be very beneficial for me to jump on that bandwagon. Yeah. yeah. And I could get really tight phasing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, you, you use a lot of effects as well, which also mask any phasing issues. Yeah, I'm I'm doing it on a parallel, and so I've had I've gotten lucky with that. I haven't had too many issues, but I can tell when they start to come out and get weird, and yeah. then I bring it I rein it back as we talked about. Yeah. What else did yeah. you have to do on Firing Squad? Anything real specific that you remember? So you did really widen small. it on an automation. Yeah, only that was only a very, very tiny bit um, with the with the imager. Uh, and very then, small EQ moves on uh, particular frequencies: eighty-seven, two hundred and twenty, and four hundred and forty. They were only uh, reductions on the two hundred and twenty and the four hundred and forty. Just to clean it up a little bit. Just a little, like one to two dB, or how much? Oh, one at most. Okay. <clears throat> And then what was the tube compressor you were using here, the uh, the vintage, you finished it with the vintage compressor? That was part of the Ozone uh, 10 plug-in. Okay. It's got a vintage tube compressor. It just seemed to suit it really, really well. Absolutely. So I yeah. wasn't going to go... I mean, the cohesion between my mixing and your mastering, it was sl it slotted together beautifully, you know, I thought. Yeah, I'll, I'll... Yeah, I thought it came across really well. <laughs> also, you were like, accentuating you all the right artist stuff. Are happy. Yeah. That's cool. As long as you, the artist, are happy, that's the main thing. Well, and as long as you're happy, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? And it, that's tomorrow, buddy. To me, tomorrow. So to... you got to oh, give me some yeah. streams. It's, it's the day. It's the day tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> Anything else about that you want to talk about? Uh, what else we got on there? Mentioned about the song and great feelings. Uh, it's good. The song. You 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 brought the you brought this down midway through and then ramped it back in. Basically, what phrase is hitting you between the eyes? Basically, when it yeah. comes back in. 
And you helped me tame that hi-hat that got out of control. Oh, also, I yep. never got a chance to talk about the dirty piano. Do you know, did I tell you about that piano part? No, no. No, no. So it's my keyboard. My analog keyboard ran through a Sonic Maximizer and um, my Memory Man pedal. Okay? So I literally wrote the little lick it's like some black keys and some white keys you know i wrote the lick and then with my left hand i was running the knob on the memory man so that i could get the feedback loop so i was literally playing my right hand on the piano and the knob on my left hand and i got a bunch of loop feedback and i did like two takes and i kept most of it that's what that piano was and i thought it turned out really cool that's good like, everyone has the same piano sound in the box, right? But my piano yeah. sound is my piano sound. It's dirty. It's, it's not super ambient and pretty. It's kind of, it sounds like an old pile of crap piano that's got one mic on it. You know what I mean? Usually the best. It doesn't have to be a Steinway. Exactly. Yeah. And that Memory Man analog delay, that was, that was fun. It was cool. It has that saturation yeah, cool. to it, you know what I mean? As it loop delays, yeah. it just saturates more and more. I thought that was so cool. Well, that's sound design. So I didn't do that in the box, everyone. I did that outboard, so, you know? Cool. <laughs> that's good. All right, dude. So let's move on to tanks. Now, you know that that's me on the lead vocal, right? Yep. So, and I don't do leads often. I have leads on two songs I believe and that was the one that Nick wrote the bones sent it to me I thought the guitar riff was so cool and uh, the song itself just spoke to me and I started to mix it um, it was during ski season and uh, that uh, cadence and melody popped into my head while I was skiing and then I bounced the idea off Corey Corey helped me with the lyrics Corey came in and helped me with the chorus as well that's why that chorus is just big it's me and Corey yeah. And uh, I don't know, I didn't really have too much trouble on that mix. Uh, oh, you helped me get the intro tamed so that the kicks weren't exploding speakers uh, through the, you know, remember when we started to master it and all the ambient yeah, parts yeah. got way out of hand. Tell me what yeah, you did on that. Yeah, that's just, there's a resonant frequency on the synth pad that was distracting. Uh, mm -hmm. which we found was around about the 250 to 300 hertz. Mm -hmm. uh, so you went away in, in the mix. You actually reduced that down, which massively cleaned it up. Mm -hmm. um, then, uh, yeah, there was a, a phase issue that I got, which we cleared up as well. Was that on the guitars? Because I was pushing the effects too hard, I think. That's what that might have been. Yeah. Was that yeah. what that was? Yeah. yeah. And I just reined it back, and I think it just kind of went away on its own. Yeah, like I say, because you use a, a lot of effects on the guitars, you know, there's a lot of sounds moving around. It's difficult to spot a phase issue against a, a deliberate um, effect that you're going for. Exactly. And then, this, it, and then what it was, as soon as I went to widen it out, it, that's when it got phasey and out of hand. Because yeah, I'm pushing a little bit of tiny bit of delay and tapped delay into that guitar chug and a little bit of reverb into compression. And then right. once I tried to widen it, it got a little weird. But yeah. I thought it was cool how the delay and the reverb were timed with the tempo and it, the guitar just kind of swings with the, with the tempo. That's kind of what I was going for. Yeah, it was cool. It came, you know, once we got the frequencies all cleaned up, yeah, it came across brilliantly. Yeah, I really like that song. Yeah, so Those drums are cool, up. too. Yeah. Big old kick, huh? Big old kick and snare. I yeah, layered a bunch of stuff. That's why you can hear that, uh, the first snare fill. That's another sample on top of some live samples, uh, both yeah. bust into compression. It's really massive sounding. No, that's cool. It was cool. So you did a little Pro Q3. You did a little bit of cut and boost in all the right sweet spots. And then you did, again, uh, Ozone 10. Um, yep. Maximized it, limited it. Did you have to widen that out at all? 
Uh, that one I didn't. No. Didn't need it, I guess. No, didn't need it. Uh, it, it already had the spice on it, so it didn't need it. Oh, yeah. I remember you helped me with that harshness uh, in the vocal. Remember? Yep, yep. I, yeah, I don't again, know why, because your monitors are so much more revealing. I couldn't, uh, I didn't fix that in the mix. You just did that in master. You covered for me, dude. <laughs> you always cover <laughs> for me, you know? It, it, it's all, what I always try to do is do it in the mix. But it, it, this one, it worked with me doing it in the mastering process mm -hmm. because it didn't, it didn't affect too much else. Yeah. You couldn't hear any, it affect anything else. So it just, just took that harshness off and it would it worked perfectly yeah i have a hard time um with losing articulation when i get too surgical it's weird i don't know i'm, I'm still learning that but as soon as i start getting a uh, surgical i feel like the articulation goes the way that i so desire so i i guess it worked out because uh, or else you would have probably told me to tame it a little more and then you could handle the rest of it in the mastering process but yeah. I mean, right there is why you got to have a, a, an objective mastering engineer right there. I mean, that that's the benefit. Yeah, it's a, it's a fresh pair of ears. Mm -hmm. So by the time this came to me, how many times did you listen to it? Hund oh, yeah. Hundreds of times. Yeah. <laughs> I start losing objectivity. Uh, you know, yeah. I lose perception of where I'm at. I, I get lost sometimes. And you're just bringing yeah, me back in, right? Well, it's, it, all the notes that I did on Messenger to you, that was off the first couple of listens. Mm. I'll listen to it once, write some notes, listen to it again, write the notes, and I'll send you the notes. Yeah. And, and then those fresh years. It. Yeah, that's it. That, and I always exactly do it. it. Like I said before, I do it first thing in the morning when I get up. So my ears haven't been turned down, basically, by the, the general noises of the day. So they're, they're as fresh as I can get them at my age. <laughs> you got good ears, man. I, you know, uh, I was interviewing Jeff Huso yesterday, and I was we were talking about having an objective ear. And, you know, he does bounce his mixes off Zach Davis, who actually I, I've got coming in tonight to do a talk with. And he's cool. an amazing local musician. We've been gigging together for 30 years or whatever. But... Um, he said, I was basic alluding to the fact that you got to have, if you're doing your own mastering, that's, to me, that's really difficult, but you at least have to have another set of ears to bounce it off of, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's really important as well. So we've got really good communication of what we can tell each other and you'll understand what I'm saying and I understand what you're saying. So we can both action what each other's saying. Um, so for either a mixer or a mastering engineer's point of view, it's great to have a very communicative client. Like some people you talk to say, oh, can you drop it down on this frequencies? And they go, no, they don't <laughs> want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, yeah, we, we, we've got a great rapport with the, the communication route that we've got. Um, I can't say it enough, but the communication is key if you want to produce something great. And we both know the language we're both academy members shout out producer yep. pro academy yeah, we're both right. members we both talk the language and so it does help doesn't it yeah 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 all right man um seventh son um that's the other song that i sing leads on and it's just kind of a bed of vocals like uh i think i quadruple tracked myself because I quadruple tracked myself, and then I rolled off uh, 100 hertz on a high-pass filter, and I just stacked them. And then Corey came in and helped me with the chorus again yeah. um, and helped me with the lyrics. And the chorus is just big and flower, and yeah. uh, there's <laughs> harmonies. And it's, By the way, back to the firing squad real quick, you, that five-part harmony in the uh, drop is to me still like one of – one of the best moments on the whole record, that five-part harmony. Yep. Corey did the uh, the root note, and then he went a half step up, and then he did a tenor uh, third up, and then he did a half step up of that, which would have been a fifth. And so there was a four-part, and I came in and just did like the 
the low tenor part and I filled in that hole. So that's why it's a five part. It's incredibly wow. beautiful to me. That's brilliant. It's like Tommy's got some talent. Yeah, those years of choir, man, helped to arrange yeah. stuff like that for sure. Now, on Seventh Son, that was a pretty bombastic drum. It is live drums. Um, pretty bombastic uh, snare, which actually I like. But yeah. what did you do? Little Pro Q3. Yeah, again, some small EQ cuts and boosts um, just to control the mids and lows. Um, then just added a little bit of two and a half K to put a bit of clarity in the mid so the vocal, uh, your vocals came through and yeah. allowed the lead guitar to cut through. Yeah. And then I, I stuck a, a very tiny shelf at 10 K just to give it a little bit of air. Yeah. Brought some air um, back into it. It, it, it's hard for me to mix my own vocal, man. I tend to tuck them like a tool record or something. Do you know what I mean? I struggled yep. with the vocal level on that for a while. Even Nick kept telling me, dude, turn up your vocals. They sound good. Just turn them up. So eventually, yep. like a one and a half dB was kind of the magic. But they were still kind of tucked. And so you brought, them, you brought it out even more in the, in the mastering. Yeah, it was, it was more of frequency rather than the level. Right. So rather than gain the whole vocal up, it was just bringing a certain frequencies out. Yeah. That, that just seemed to give them the presence that they needed where they needed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that was good. Then um, after I'd done that EQ, then I then put the uh, SSL 4KB on it just to give it the SSL taste. Yeah. That seemed, that seemed to work with it really well. Yeah. Uh, with the... G series compressor on it and just then then I dropped it into the ozone and then also did a bit of uh, automation on the imaging for that as well we did the chorus and the uh, verse just to give it a little bit more width when you, you really go into it right which it needed to get, get the guitars out in the corners and yeah you are using SSL stuff I'm using SSL stuff it seems to just keep the um, the aesthetic stays quite focused uh, yeah. when we're both using that stuff. Uh, it has good continuity between the mix and the master to me. Yeah, I think I think both our ears are tuned to it. Yeah, definitely. So it, it's good that if you're after the SSL sound from your mixing, when you're mixing it and probably tracking it as well, it's yeah. good to get that continuity going. Yep, and I guess the low end, you cut a, uh, let's see, what you do, you, you cut a little mid-low, or, that kick was enormous, I don't know if I had it EQ'd perfectly, but once again, you probably covered for me on that. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah, so I did a, a low cut at 25, a two, 24 dB low cut at 25, that just cleans up all the unwanted subs at the bottom. Yeah, because okay. that's just white. That's just wasted energy down there. Yeah, it tightened unless, up the low unless, end. Yeah, unless you've got a set of twenty-one inch subs at home that you like listening to, you, you're never going to get there. <laughs> no, I I mean I have a sub in my car that I test all my mixes in, and I can tell if it's going to start getting way out of hand. But but yeah. you in particular are very good with low end. You always have been. Your 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 vocals and your low end always just right where it should be so whatever you're doing you're doing it right that probably takes me back to when i was doing speaker designs i was doing pa designs exactly so i was designing 21 inch 24 inch subs so that's it i like i love the bass frequencies <laughs> and you know all the right spots to roll it off and boost and cut you know yeah really that's tight also, in. done a lot of ear training as well for it yeah, that's helping, huh? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> yeah. All right, moving yeah, along, the, the UFO. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> let's see, I don't want to sound uh, can pretentious, but this particular song, I wrote the drum arrangement, and then I play all the rhythm guitars. 
And then I bounced it off Nick, and he goes, dude, try a lead in the, uh, in the verse parts. And so I played the lead as well. And then I sent it to Nick, and Nick did, um, oh, my goodness, I also played the bass on that one. <laughs> well. <laughs> my, I played my P bass, and I'm not using a pick. I'm doing um, finger mutes. That's why you can hear the, the mutes. I, that's the type of, of stuff I thought I called for. I don't always play that way, but, and then Nick wrote the vocals and the lyrics, sent it back to me, and then I had Corey come in and do some reinforcement on the vocals, and that is UFO. Cool song. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, so my first comment on it is this song came across as a relentless march. Yeah. It is relentless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's cool lyrics nick uh, nick and corey both have a way with words man both those yep. guys write really good lyrics if you've ever gone way into my archive and looked at the sam stuff from that was me nick and corey's band from two from 99 to 2003 uh corey's vocals on that material is just incredible just incredible man so if you ever want to dive into that sam stuff yeah, take okay, a look yeah. at it it's new metal yeah. okay yep okay um yeah this that one, mix wasn't too difficult nope only small moves again on this one mm -hmm. um slot boost at 90 cut at one and a half boost at 3k again for the vocals and then a bit of air on the top mm -hmm. um sent it through a maximizer into a vintage limiter then um bit of DSing on this one just to control the tops a little bit mm -hmm. uh, and then i did a parallel compression on this one with the ssl g3 mm. uh, on the multi-band compressor set to mid and side just to control on the width you know give a bit of texture between the, the side and the mids okay yeah it's embellished all in the right spots yeah, yeah that's a killer master um all right let's keep going after the storm now yeah you said marilyn manson style lyric sure yeah. and led zeppelin totally when Corey read that he was thrilled he thought he took that as a compliment by the way that, and yeah, yeah his vocals on that song are awesome man that song yeah. and, and i left you 10 db a headroom because I knew you'd be able to deal with the low end in a way that I just didn't want to go down that rabbit hole. So I tried to mix it and balance it as best I could. I shaped it like I would normally, got the drums pumping. I had a good balance, worked the guitars, worked the vocals. And then I gave you 10 dB of headroom, and you just made that bottom end just massive. Yeah, so that was uh, the one there. Uh... Put a 1.2 boost at 200. Uh, da, da, da. That puppy hits in a subcar, man. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. That snare, too. Uh, it's really cool. Cool groove. Yeah. Again, stuck that on the parallel as well with the uh, multiband SSL G3. Uh, that, again, was on the low in the mids only. Mm-hmm. So the the crossover I'd set at one twenty, so I was I was able to control the lows and the mids a little bit better. Yeah, I remember was it you yeah, yeah. or Nick told me I needed to carve out a little three hundred on that uh, arpeggio synth part, you know, do, 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 that arpeggio that drives it yeah. under the drums. Um, I, I I went back and I carved that out a little, and then it ended up sitting in the mix much better. Uh, one thing also I did on the low end was I used the um, Stephen Slate Infinity Bass. Oh, yeah. That's a, it's their subharmonic synthesizer, which, yeah. Yeah. I, I have it. to taste it. <laughs> and I haven't used it yet. I've been using um, the Waves one, uh, our bass. Yep. Which is a similar very, concept. Very similar. Yeah, very similar. And so I put Give that on kicks uh, at 50 hertz. And I, I, I'm boosting below the uh, actual target because yep. then you can roll it off. But if you boost too high, I feel like it brings up 
some unwanted stuff. So I'm boosting yeah, just below they, the target. Yeah. Yeah, it's good just playing with them. Just <clears throat> blending them That's in. what she said. Um, no, that, that worked out killer, dude. I love that song. Uh, Bruise by Bruise. So this has that brooding, long intro with, you yeah, know, you picked it up, the COVID reference, the animal noises, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was yeah, that, very... that just needed to be brought up on the intro. That that was that sets the tone for the song. That was really good. Totally, because it's, it's the sound design. It, con it's a concept song, you know. Uh, yeah. Other than that, oh, shout out uh, the. Uh, I want to tell you the story on the djembe tracks. So, Bruce by Drews, Bruce has live djembe played by um, Mike Lomax. The other one is Changing Tides. Okay, so. Yep. I could have played the djembe myself, and I do play djembe fairly well, but I wanted to be the engineer, so I brought Mike in, because what I did was I did a Michael Beinhorn thing, where I uh, energized the room uh, f through the PA in the live jam room, and okay. so I, I had subs, the mic at the bottom of the djembe going through the PA, then I, ca I had a SM57 on the top, and then a room mic to pick up the uh, energy in the room. That's why nice. that low end extension on that djembe is there, because I was boom, yeah. I was electrifying the room. <laughs> Freaking sick. Turned out killer, man. We yeah, had a lot yeah, of fun doing good. that. So I recommend trying stuff like that if you're ever capturing djembe. Yeah. Or... He does it with kick drum. He talked about, okay. in an interview uh, with, I think, Rick Beato, he talked about uh, doing it with kick drum with Matt Cameron on um, the, on a Super Unknown Soundgarden album. He's done sure. it a, a couple other times, too. Yeah, I read a book a few years ago. I'm pretty sure uh, Daniel Lanois does a, a similar thing as well. Yeah. Pumping it through a PA and then t picking the room up with the PA mm -hmm. really going. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, again on that on that one as well was straight through the SSL 4KB small EQ moves again then into the um, Ozone 10 into a limiter then parallel compression again with a multi-band compressor um, yeah just to tame things down a little bit yeah give them a little tweak I feel like that uh, parallel compression also gives it that glue and punch too it tames but it also makes things punchy and exciting yeah look well, all of them again when i've used the parallel compression they're not just slide it in at a fixed level that's it it stays i also automate it as well to suit the track and the dynamics right. of the track as the track moves i'll bring it in take it out just to again add more texture to it good call yeah absolutely good call Okay, Tunnel Rat. This is the other song that came out of Nick's uh, war documentary bender he went on. <laughs> pretty gnarly <laughs> song. Pretty cool, dude. Uh, Corey came in and did some vocal reinforcement, which I thought turned out killer. Um, the mix was fairly straightforward on this. Because I had multiple singers, though, Corey and Nick, I had to... I had to carve out space for their vocals differently, right? So Corey's kind of the lead and Nick's the backup. That's kind of how I approached it. Other than that, it was yep. pretty straightforward. Yeah, this one, my main note was loads of distortion to deal with on this one. That's purely because of the style that it was. Not not the fact that it's badly recorded. It's lots of distortion sound, so... right. Loads of frequencies going Big on. Big distorted uh, guitars, is that what you mean? Yeah. Also that distorted yeah. bass that uh, yeah. like was going for kind of a... Yeah, on, on the bass side of the... Sergio of Vega, band. okay? Like Sergio oh, no. Vega, with his work in uh, Quicksand and, and in uh, Deftones, he's always got this beautiful distortion on the nose of his bass. I love that sound. That's kind of yeah. what I was going for. Oh, cool. But yeah... Might have got out of hand. You did a good job on that. Widened it, right? Or yeah, it's, yeah. Small moves again. Rolled off the uh, low end, below twenty nine. So we got rid of the the real sub sub frequencies that were just 
taking up too much energy. Um, you chose the number 29 instead of 30. Is that, that's by design, right? You want to let a little 30 hertz through, but. Yeah, it, again, it's one of those things. I just ignore the monitor and right. just sweep okay. and go, right, yep, yeah, that, that works. And that's what it is. So my notes are just taken from what I did mm -hmm. when I viewed it on the screen. Nothing was, oh, I need 29 because I want to pass 30 hertz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, that's the thing, Trev. My, my ear's not as good as yours. So I, have, I go through <laughs> the magic EQ points and fish around. Uh, but I have to take a more scientific approach because, A, I don't have as good of monitors and B, I don't think my ears is good. So that's why I got you on my team, bro. <laughs> no, it's, it, I'm, I'm well on your team, mate. Don't worry about that. It's it's just a case of listen. It's just the hearing. Yeah. Like I say, if you've got your good monitors, you've got a, you know, so I've got a reasonably well-treated room. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot easier to hear those little bits. You know, would it make a difference if I went to 30 or 31? Not massively. <laughs> would it? Would it? Would the average listener notice? Not a cutting else chance. Right. You know, it's it, when you go to these finite details and the moves that we're making at the mastering stage. Would Joe Bloggs, the average listener, no, no way on this planet. You know, it drives my family nuts when I'm listening to it and change it. A bit, listen, change it again. Yeah. Just saying, it, you're listening to the same thing. It's like, mm -hmm. Yes, I am, but I'm, no, I'm not <laughs> at the same time. Exactly. Well, but again, that's, that, that song know. again was small moves. Yeah, you got it, a good it, ear. Yeah, a massive amount of work to it. Again, just dropped a DSer on the on the tail end of it just to uh, time it between between right. five to fourteen, just to drop that edge off it. But again, you're only talking half a dB of DSer. Mm -hmm. which means i did my job i had a decent mix for you to push through the final process right you'll be back he froze up a little and we're back again and that's uh mike lomax on the djembe again that was the other song that we did oh cool yeah yeah so fun yeah that jimmy hits too it's cool yeah it's, it's a brilliant sound um i remember doing a couple of mixes for addy mm. that hit the road and obviously he's african music with the moroccan stuff lots on the djembe's mm -hmm. yeah really good sound really good yeah. sound i love it man yeah. i spent i'll tell you a short short story i spent many springs in moab in the caves with my djembe now, if you sandstone caves, when you hit the djembe low end, the whole cave acts like a speaker box. Yeah. So it, goes, it, it resonates. resonates. It goes boom. Yeah. And um, the guys at camp, they would go, Dave, go in the go in the cave and play some djembe for a while. They would just listen and <laughs> do whatever they were doing, you know, while yeah. I was playing djembe in the cave. A lot of fun, man. So I kind of got my nice. chops doing that. That's brilliant. <clears throat> Painted Angels. Dude, this song had a lot of tracks, man. This song I had a lot of tracks, and we did a lot of vocal takes on it and sifted it through. I, the drums were pretty straightforward. You know, it's more of a dance beat. Yep. It's not supposed to be live drums by any measure. It's more of a... It's funny. It's a, almost like a pop rock crossover. It's... But it's got funny lyrics, you know. He talks about Vegas and the, the hooker and the blow, and you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny. It's got humor in it, but it's also got a serious no tone about it. But fun song. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was good. Um, yeah, I got it down as a an anthemic. I'll give it an anthemic vocal um, mm -hmm. anthemic. feel to it, uh, and certainly with the uh, the lead guitar riffs as well. Mm hmm. Um, again, this, this I'd put down very minimal work on it. 
didn't need a lot of work at all. Um, just a little bit of clean up of the low mids. Mm -hmm. And then just through the maximizer. Yeah, it's... Yeah, cool. Imag well, imager well, on this one that uh, automated through the choruses. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's... Like I said, it, it didn't take a lot of work at all. We're talking a DB here and there. That's yeah. it. Awesome vocal performance by Corey on it. And also yep. the guitar work on that song, like you said, the leads too. And there's awesome yeah. guitar work all over the album that Nick did, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, yeah I'm, not, I'm not a guitarist. I can't fault it. Yeah, he is... It flows out of him. He doesn't do anything yeah. super technical, and that's by design that's fine he's a but what he does is very tasteful you know yeah yeah where you got brad and brad's a pentatonic scale ripper right uh, and he's a technical player but nick is a little less technical but super tasteful and his what he thinks up his licks and grooves are just so awesome and tasteful so yeah. different players all together yeah absolutely yeah yeah. Okay, needle and thread. We're moving along. We're approaching an hour, so let's see if we can get through this. Yep, needle and thread. Needle and thread. This was a tough mix for me, dude. Everything lived in the same area, and there was like so much 500 and 700 buildup. I just couldn't handle it. So I'm like, I like threw my hands up. I did as shaped it as best I could, and I sent it to you. And I'm like, you gotta fi fix this for me. <laughs> we did do a, a few reviews of this one, didn't we? Yeah. Lots yeah. of revisions. Um, this one in Caviar, the two last songs on the album, uh, yep. were the toughest for me to mix. Yeah, this one, uh, when I was doing the mastering on it again, put a multiband EQ on it, on the top. Um, yeah, I did quite a big side cut, actually, at 100 hertz, to clean that area up on the sides. Very good. Uh, and then another side cut at 250, but that was only a small, a very small one at point. Point three, which is negligible whether you can hear it or not. Um, sure. Again, that that just allowed me to clean the snare and the kick up, just give them a bit more clarity. Well, we definitely uh, had our process down by then, and 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 I yeah. wasn't afraid to have you. You were like, okay, go in here, try and fix this, and then back into the mastering phase, and it got yeah. closer and closer and closer, and then. That last mix I did when the master came back, I, I was just like, dude, we got it. Yep. I just yep. felt like the cloud went away, like it was, you know, the cloudiness, yep. five seven hundred, it just went away, and I was I was very happy. Yeah. I, I, I guess if you don't work for it, you won't feel the gratitude, right? <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of stuff that we both agreed needed fixing in the mix, not the mastering. Right. Because it was so dense around that area, it, you had to do it in the mixing, not in the mastering stage. Otherwise, you'd be affecting too much of everything else. Right. But, and yeah, that was where that. our process really went into overtime. That's we we nailed it. We had to communicate that through. And yeah, I went through Messenger the other day on that, and there was a lot of communication on yeah. that one. <laughs> it was a doozer. But it was good. It was good. It's beautifully dark and angie's on that angie murphy's vocals there's listen bro there's three singers on that that i had to yeah. make a flower you know it's like uh corey and angie are on the outsides and there's a little bit of movement like that and then nick is kind of in the middle and so when you're dude when you're mixing three vocals and trying to get them all with enough detail so that they all pop out that's it wasn't an easy task no no it's like the, the thing that really stuck out for me on that one is it's got a, a heavy leonard skinner tongue mm -hmm. really so as yeah. soon as i heard it boom that's exactly what it sounded like right yeah uh corey said in our uh, album breakdown that he literally was going for the uh uh, the the uh, what's his name, Cohen? Leonard Skinner. Oh, Leonard Cohen. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I said Leonard Skinner. I typed it down wrong. But, okay, yeah. well that that reference works too, but yeah, because of the southern yeah. the southern 
rock aspect yeah. of it. But Leonard Cohen, he straight went down that baritone rabbit hole, and yeah. it, the song was cool for it. Yeah. No, it and then beautiful. Angie gives it that contrast with the beauty, right? Yep. So it's just a cool song, man. I hope that one gets some traction because obviously it's mellow, for one. And I like to tell my buddies that there's something for everyone on the album. Yeah, you've got the the correct ebb and flow mm -hmm. of the, the album. You've got the quick stuff that gives you a bit of a respite with the next track. Then you've got a bit quicker and you've got heavier, a little bit slower and lighter. Then you've got heavy again. So you've got a really good ebb and flow. So Yes, thank you. That's what That's what you want it to do. Um, I've learned all that from years of DJing. To keep yeah. an audience going, you need the ebb and flow. You have to do that. If yeah, just Nick and I it. really focused on the track list order a lot for that reason. Yes. And uh, we yeah. did a bunch of different revisions of it. But in the end, we felt that it was just that. It had good ebb and yeah. flow. So If you hit them all between the eyes with 150 BPM, relentless chugging guitars and all, They'll listen to it once and they'll never come back to it. Right. So, yeah, I'm hoping, and it certainly feels that way to me, that this album is one that will stay on your playlist and you'll always go back to it. I, I hope so, and I think so, because, you know, listen, it's got just enough sophistication where you can't absorb the whole thing with one listen. You have to go back and pick up the nuances, and that's what makes for a great record is, you know, you pick up something new every time you listen to it. Yeah, there's lots in there to listen to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can Thank listen you. through it again and think, oh, where's that come from? What's that bit? Me too. I took a yeah. break from it. I've been working on Black Star, and I, when I for the, when I went back and listened to the songs for the first album breakdown, I was blown away. So was Corey. He's like, dude, good job, man, on this. I was like. You good job. Everyone did a great job that contributed. It's pretty. Uh, it's. I'm very proud of it. Yeah. No, you should be. All, and all, then we all get of you, all of you guys. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you're a big part of it too. Obviously, you know, we got the process down to a science, didn't we? Just, just a little bit at the end. Yeah. It's, it's how you track it and you record it. That's the most important thing. Starts at the fingers, as they say. That's it. Exactly that. Now, the last track on the album is Caviar, right? And uh, yep. this one was tricky too, bro. I had it, uh, you know, Nick wrote it uh, with, it had program drums on it, and I replaced the program drums with my samples and Trigger, and I was messing with it, MPC, doing all this stuff. And it was okay, but I was just never happy with it. So... I talked a little bit about this with the guys, but in the 12th hour, I decided to do live drums on it. You remember? Yep. Yep. And uh, I got the performances I needed and all the parts, but dude, it was really hard to slot it in and mix it. It was really difficult to uh, to mix to make it feel continuity, you know? Yeah. But I think. In the end, we got it. This was another one we went back and forth. I bounced it off you. Like This was like maybe seven revisions or something crazy. Yeah, and you helped me one, get yeah. there, I think. Yeah, again, through all the communication, that then made the final little little bit on the mastering a lot easier. On the initial one, it was really tough. And then mm. we did the back and forth with all the little, little changes that you could do on the mix itself. And like you say, you weren't happy with sex inside. So you change it. Send the message. Trev, have a listen to this. Oh, okay, yeah, and then yeah, now we're going in the direction that you you wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was it was a difficult one, but loads of lessons learned on that one. Totally, man. Like all those mistakes made uh, getting those yeah. reps made us. I was fighting the high hap lead, and then um, I felt the mid was getting cloudy again. So I started carving out uh, two fifty, three hundred up to 400 yep. and then it started to open up and then it started to make more sense once i got a handle on that yeah uh again it looks like i've done a lot of um mid cuts and side cuts as well 
yeah at different frequencies again to to get that separation that you were looking for exactly oh and i ended up going in low pass in the guitars and it started to give it more focus and yeah that was yeah. uh a lot of lessons learned on that one for sure yeah yeah brilliant anything else you want to say about any of that no no not on that particular one but um just the whole album was an absolute pleasure to master for you it was yeah it was an honor i, th I think it's a, an absolutely superb piece of work thank you so you, you, you and the guys you, i should say yeah you, know, you and the guys should be really proud of what you've produced and uh rock on tomorrow when it yeah, comes man. out yeah we are out tomorrow yeah freak breed emerge tomorrow is the 19th and uh yeah the 19th um, let me just tell you, I'll plug a few things, and then I'll give you an opportunity to plug whatever you want to plug. But uh, So uh, Nick and I are getting our budget together. We want we wanted to master the first Freak Breed album, the seven-song EP that we did back in 2011. Then we have the Apophis uh, EP that we want to get mastered. And I just got to touch up the mixes, and then there's one more that just came in for the Apophis uh, project, which you've heard some of it. That's the Dark Wave Synth Wave Industrial yep. Project. And then we've got yep. the remixes now yep. that we're working on, and I'm excited to see what you come up with. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, there's a lot of irons in the fire it. right now. Yeah, hell of a, you'll be busy very busy <laughs> which you will too because we're gonna get you working on this stuff too so oh. we'll t we're, we're gonna take care of you thank you and um the atf demos we're you know i've got one more drum track to do with the atf demos and then i'm gonna move my drums further back by the window so we can start rehearsing again because I've, we've got two shows coming up uh okay. september and november um which the September show is out of state. We're going to Montana for a biker bar deal at a place called The Notch. And then in uh, November, we're playing Funk and Dive in Ogden, which is a cool, it's a cool little club. Yeah, you'll have to put links in the description of all the venues that you're going to. I will. I'll advertise when it's time, when I get there. Yeah. Also, do me a favor when we wrap this up. Will you send me all the links you want me to put in the video description, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And what else you got going on? What do you want to plug? Me, just uh, if anybody needs any mixing or mastering, just hit me up at www.trevornoxmusic.co.uk. Anywhere in the world. doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> It, it all it's all works and it's all good yeah so, it's yeah. amazing that we can work the, so far away and and you know the guys scotty was saying the same thing about the way nick and i work he's 2300 miles away and then scotty's like yeah. you can't tell that we're 2300 miles away like it's nick nick's in the room you know we're writing for each other and it's like we're working through the same muse you know Corey too yeah. that's how Corey feels we're all well, running off the same muse well as as this technology is getting better and better and better it, it just the world's got smaller and smaller yeah true man so, well, you say we're, we're in completely different time zones but we're in the room with each other now exactly so cool it's fun and when you right. get a workshop out here in the u.s uh let me know which one and where yeah. so we can hook up yes definitely well i'm gonna try and plan my budget so i can actually come over and to see you cool, rather than do a workshop i, I want to come and visit you yeah i can pop over to la and go and see eric as well mm -hmm. which i'd love to do because i did unfortunately didn't get the chance to catch up with Eric when we were doing rockfield because he was ill no Captain of all our nurses over here in the UK. Well, Tara and I would love to have you. I have a spare bedroom, so, yeah, I'll put you up and everything, yeah, man. Cool. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got to come over there and do stuff, so, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll man. Sort that out when I've got the, uh, got the Love to do to a project out. while you're here. We could work, you know, yeah. burn midnight oil. We could get some stuff done. Man, it'd be fun. It'd be no so problem. Fun. No problem at all. No problem. That's cool. Cool, man. Well, I mean, that's everything pretty much. Send me yeah. your links and uh, get this puppy out. Yeah, no problem. I'll uh, get on to your remix now as well. 
I'm excited to hear what you come up with. Uh, listen to my revision so you can hear what I did with the arrangement, yep. just for ideas. Okay. All right? Yeah, yeah it's just I'm at the, the outro side at the moment. Cool. So I'm just seeing what to do with the vocals and the drums on the outro. Yeah. So. Because I, I cut in and two more measures of the cool, heavy guitar part. Listen to my mix so you can see where I changed the arrangement to give you ideas. Because I, yep. I wanted to use that hook more because it was so awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you can change the arrangement, mess with it all you want, dude. That's the whole point of this exercise. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll get it finished for you, and then you can have a listen. All right, man, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. That's no, cool. All right, brother. Trevor awesome, Noakes, though. UK mastering engineer, mix engineer. You're the man, bro. You're, you're my buddy. So let's talk Thanks, soon. Bro. We'll do this again, okay? Yeah, will do. Have a good day. All right, you too, man. Have a great day. Thanks again for this. See you soon. All right, man. Bye. Bye.